How's it going, everybody? Rob Brand here today, and we are back with our Ottawa Senators franchise mode. And yeah, you guys absolutely killed it on the last episode. So many likes, so much support. I really, really appreciate it, you guys. I'm going to do my best uh, to keep it rolling for you guys, make it a good one. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. We got a lot of content coming this year, and leave a like if you're going to enjoy the video. So I was looking at some of your comments and some of the things that we that we needed as a team. And one of the things you guys mentioned was um, adding some more physicality. And I also noticed that a lot of our team is super young. And I mean, that's great. It's a great thing that our team is young. We got 21 year old Kachuk. I mean, 28 uh, uh, Granlin and 31 Dadnov, but then 26 Brown, 23 White, 21 Norris, 23 Balsers. Tierney's at uh, 26. I mean, 22, 28. I Honestly, this team is just really young, and we don't have an established veteran presence that's been there and done that. I mean, look if you look at the defensive core, uh, we guys got like Shabbat and Riley, uh, Brandstrom with Cam Fowler, and then Zaitsev and uh, Christian Jaros. So the back end seems fine. To me, we could use another forward or two. So I decided to, after last game, split up the way we're looking uh, for our forward core. I really like Josh Norris. I'd love him to play on the third line center for us. Um, but we would probably need to get him some help. Uh, and that's something that I'm looking to do in this video. There are, there's one player in mind that I think fits exactly what we need. He needs a change of scenery. Um, and you know, he's got a fractured relationship with the organization and they, I know they just signed him, but it's a fractured relationship and I think they signed him to move him. And I'm going to go up to the Edmonton Oilers here and you guys probably know who I'm talking about now that I'm on the Oilers. But he is one of their right wingers from Finland, Jesse Puljujarvi. 78 overall, 22, but low elite potential. He's got 1.175, so he's super cheap. Now, if you go and look what the computer would want, and it would be Balsers and a third. Um, I don't know. I think if I was Edmonton, I wouldn't just do a third in Balsers for Puljujarvi. Um, a Chalopic there as well. I'd like to keep him. Uh, I don't think Pul if Puglio Yarby doesn't work out, I think Chalopic's more of a, a safe bet. He's playing on our first line in the AHL, but this is a trade I can work with. I don't think they'd want Balsers, just 100% honestly. Um, 77 overall depth player. He's a sniper, sure. Maybe they're high on him and higher than I think so. Um, but I think if I was Edmonton, I'd probably want uh, a roster player and the roster player I'm looking to give him is a guy that I see as unnecessary for us, and that's Anisimov. We have a, a, a glut of centers. He's 32, and, I, you know, listen, he's fine for the fourth line and whatever. Two-way forward, he's pretty solid, but he doesn't fit in any kind of plan we have, plus he's at $4.45 million. Now, as you guys just saw, Edmonton will be over the salary cap, so I'm going to retain all of our Artem Anisimov, Anisimov's uh, contract there that 2.275 and we're also going to go to Edmonton and help them out a little bit more sweeten the deal right we're going to go and take Chris Russell at 79 4 million for one year we're going to take him back in full um, this trade is pretty darn close so I, I, I don't know if it's going to go through or not but we're taking a bad contract we're retaining half of Anisimov who's instantly going to step in and you know and play for them he's an 80 overall center uh, they can shift some things around, and they're going to get rid of a disgruntled player in Jesse Pulu Yarby, uh, who's low elite, and he really just kind of fits what we're trying to do here in Ottawa. We got a lot of young, young guys that have that potential to be really sick, and it, you know, if Pulu Yarby can play on that second line this year and really grow for us, I think I think that that'll be fantastic. Now they have guys like Bear and Lavoie and McLeod on uh, on their trade block. I don't know if I'm. I, they definitely not trade Bear, but uh, Pulu Yarby just kind of seems. Uh, perfect for me. So if we try and send this trade, it would work. We'd have to send Brandstrom down, um, which is okay. Puglia Yarby has anxiety with his new team. Uh, Chris Russell's having anxiety with his new team. And I don't think I want to move Brandstrom down. Let's go ahead and check out the defenseman real quick. Yeah, I don't know why Yaros and Wol Wol Wolanin are even up here. Uh, they're both surplus to requirement. So we're going to send them both down, and that still leaves us with 7.3 million in cap space. We're going to hit best lines and let it do its thing. Um, oh, they're all upset because I sent Christian Jaros down. That's fine. You guys will suck it up. So there were a couple guys in free agency, too, that I thought would be a good get. And they're not crazy. I'm not going after Bartzell. I'm not going to try and send him an offer sheet or snap up Olafson or any of these RFAs, really. 
Um, none of them want a cheap deal that would be cheap enough for us to get. Uh, let's let's just look at the RFAs real quick. Nobody, none, nobody's cheap enough here. I mean, maybe a Jack Roslevic would be a really good get for our bottom six. Um, we could offer sheet him for sure. If we go ahead and offer him a one year deal like that, boom, uh, no picks. I think that I, honestly, that kind of makes sense. Now that I look at it, look a little deeper. Mackenzie Wegar is not bad, but we just got Chris Russell. Uh, he's 26. He didn't have a lot of time to grow, but Jack Roslevic is that perfect, uh, second, third line or third line, fourth line center for us. Now that we got rid of, uh, got rid of. Uh, Anisimov. So we're going to offer Jack Roslevic one year, probably one million. See if I can entice him a little bit more. No picks required. Winnipeg will probably match that, but I'll let you know uh, if we do. But we've also got some UFAs that I thought would be good signings for us. And none of these guys up here, uh, these guys make sense. But I was looking for a little bit more physicality and a little more toughness out of our forward core, as you guys mentioned we should. And I kind of agreed with that. Uh, so we've got Jamie McGinn here as a two-way forward, 79 overall. Pretty physical. It's not what I call too physical. And we got some grinders down here as well. But let's sort by overall instead of seeking, right? So if we go here, we've got Brian Boyle at 35. He's a veteran. He's physical. Look at that physical category, boys. He's 35, like I said. He can play left wing as well. He can win faceoffs. 80 on the faceoffs. Still can do a shift. 80 passing. 81 offensive awareness. He's good defensively. He'll help the young guys out uh, tremendously. And I don't think he's getting. Uh, any offers from anywhere else, and I really don't see him being in the league that much longer. So maybe he'll just come to Ottawa uh, for one last rodeo, teach the young guys, uh, and that's that's that. And then there was another guy down here that I was looking to sign, uh, another power forward, Brett Ritchie. Uh, he's the kind of guy that I think we could send down to the minors at .75, um, and he could play down there and help help those guys with chemistry. Um, or he can play up in the uh, in the majors here in the NHL. So I think that's another just good physical signing that maybe you know we can play him in that bottom six and we can uh, improve our physicality. Um, I do need to get rid of a goalie. Um, I would like to get rid of uh, one. We have three AHL quality goaltenders. Uh, I want to get rid of one of them to a team that doesn't exactly have goaltenders. Uh, so we take a quick look. As you guys can see, yeah, we've got Gustafson there at 75, 22. I'm keeping him. Uh, we've got Decord here at 24, 77, or Hogberg at 25, 77. He's the medium starter, so I think I'll get rid of Decord. Uh, he's on a two-way deal. It makes sense. Hogberg, I mean, he's medium fringe starter. He's got the potential. Both of these guys are interchangeable, in my opinion, but I'll get rid of Decord to a team that probably needs an upgrade. Um in the goaltender, or I guess Columbus just wants him. I guess Columbus wants to upgrade their goaltending situation in the minors. It doesn't make sense uh, too much, but if they want him, sure. Um, here, here's a team that needs somebody for the minors. That would that would make sense. Uh, they've got Dubnik and Jones, but they really need that third goaltender. Um, I know I have injuries off, but they just don't have anybody for the minors, really. So if we take a look at their draft picks, can we get a fourth for Decord? Uh, probably not. Trade rejected. It, I didn't think so. Uh, I'm trying to replenish those later round picks, guys. We don't have a ton this year. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we're actually going to get anything for this um, other than maybe a seventh. Um, just a seventh. This is just a dump so that the computer doesn't um, start him. Wow, woefully insufficient, and it's just a seventh from this year. It looks like I'm going to have to go to next year's draft picks. Can I get a fourth from next year? Probably not. No, woefully insufficient. I guess we might just be stuck hanging on to Decord. Uh, a sixth next year, just something. Trade, yeah, no, I don't think I'm getting rid of Decord, boys. Um, which is wild because you'd think that they'd um, just. I'm offering you a free goalie, basically a goalie that you want for something you want to give up. Uh, but unfortunately, it looks like we're stuck with Decord. So my grand plan of getting rid of a goalie that we don't have to um, play. I mean, Gustafson, people want him because of the medium starter. I don't know if he's going to be anything. He could grow to be a backup for us. That's the thing. I think I'm going to bench Decord, start Gust or uh, put Gustafson as the second goalie in the AHL, and Hogberg's going to be our starter. Um, some of you may think I'm crazy just because he's one year younger, but the the medium starter versus the medium excuse me medium fringe starter versus medium backup is the reason why I do it. I would want to upgrade our backup goaltending situation, but I I just don't think it's it's there for us. It's not on for us this year, if you will. So let's go ahead and advance a day or two up to this Leafs game, see if we can get both Boyle, Roslovic, and um, 
uh, and, and Brett Ritchie to accept. We've got this game against Toronto that I'll just sim past. Brian Boyle accepted, which is good to see. He will come it right in. Um, Josh Norris lost morale, but uh, see, like, like these guys are upset because they're in the same role, right? Uh, if we do best lines real quick, is Pull you? Yeah, Pull you Yarby's here. Where does he fit? He fits on the second line. Uh, so I would like to put him on that second line. And there we go. So he's going to play with white and brown. And then the third line here, uh, we're going to have uh, Watson drop to the fourth line. We're going to play Batherson with Tierney. Would Tierney? Um, yeah, okay. I'm just trying to figure out chemistry-wise here, guys, what we're looking at. Uh, Tierney definitely fits that third line. Uh, Formington, does Norris fit on the third line? He does. Norris is really good on the third line. Uh, he's a center. Can Tierney play? These guys can't play any other position. You get minus three if I sent those guys down there. Uh, Austin Watson's fine. Nick Paul. I'll probably send Nick Paul down to the minors, to be 100% honest, although he's a power forward, so I could definitely use that. Uh, we got two-way two forward, two-way forward. Can we get um, just scratched? See what Nick Paul does here for that line. It's a plus one now, which is good. Uh, that definitely helps out that line. Um, and then we've got, oh, is Brian Boyle in the minors? Because I hope he's not in the minors. Do I have to call him up? I think I might have to call him up here, guys. Uh, in the system, Brian Boyle is in the system. I would like Chalopic to play as much as he can down there. Uh, I know he's 23-78. He's listed as a depth forward, though. I've got I've got pretty high hopes for him to be, you know, a third-line center of the future. Oh, I just quit out. It, really? I backed out of roster moves, and it's going to back me out of that completely. Um, Formington, I might send Formington down, he, although he's listed as a fourth-line forward. Uh, Austin Watson is listed as a fourth line forward as well. He's a grinder, but can we get him out for Brian Boyle? Let's see if what happens if we do that. And we get a, it's even now, which is good. I'll probably play Brian Boyle on that third line, playing with Tierney, which kind of makes sense. Formington, Norris, and then Nick Paul doesn't really fit on that line, does he? Uh, he would boost this, this. Okay, so what if we move Batherson to the fourth line? We all of a sudden get a plus three. With Connor Brown, Tierney, and Brian Boyle gets a plus three. So that's pretty big right there. Uh, maybe we have to move Formanton or one of these guys down Batherson because I, I kind of don't want them playing fourth line, and he's a sniper. So until he's ready, I think I'd rather play um, a guy like Watson in a fourth line role, right? Uh, and that's even. There we go. So keeping him on the left wing makes sense, um, and there we go. So... These should be the lines going into it. We've got Paul there. Um, does Brian Boyle make this line any better? Not doesn't change it too much, but Brian Boyle is better uh, for now. So we've got Paul Jarvi, Colin White, and Brian Boyle, but Nick Paul, Chris Tierney, and Connor Brown. That's not too bad. Would Tierney up here make a difference? Not really. Is he even fit for the second line? No. Nick Paul's decent on the second line, and he's how old? He's 25, medium bottom six, so he could put up points. I'd like to have him put up more points probably. Uh, with Paul Jujarvi. This might not be a good second line, but listen, uh, we're going to probably change our coach in the offseason because I really don't like the way our coach doesn't really fit with our top guys all that well. Uh, I mean, carry, shoot, balance, balance. The balance, balanced is fine. You're going to find pretty much every coach fits that, but carry and shoot are what we want uh, because all three of these guys on the top here fit carry, shoot, and I'm I'm sure that we could get a plus five here with the right head coach. Uh, defensively, they have Fowler and Shabbat together, Chris Russell and Zaitsev, and then uh, Mike Riley um, and Brandstrom. Brandstrom does make that better there. Does Cam Fowler? Yeah, no, I don't think I'd want to play Brandstrom over his head just yet. He's still listed as a depth forward, top four, top six, top four, top four. Okay. So all things considered, we'll probably play Cam Fowler and Shabbat together. Um and that should work for us. As far as special teams are concerned, Kachuk, Granlin, Brown, Dadnov, Shabbat is fine with me. Um, I would like um, not Zaitsev, but uh, left defense, Brandstrom. I would like Brandstrom playing some power play line. Does he actually make it better? He does make it better than Thomas Shabbat. Um, and that would be nice to shelter him. But for one season, we'll put him... Uh, here we've got Batherson, we've got Colin White, and we've got Chris Tierney. We don't have a sniper. Um, oh, Paul Jarvi. Yeah, let's get Paul Jarvi in here. Uh, changing current line. There we go. So we now have a sniper with a two way forward and a two way forward. Uh, Chris Tierney there, uh, Colin White, and then Jesse Paul Jarvi. Uh, Cam Fowler and Eric Brandstrom. Chuck Granlin, Brown, Dadnov, 
and Shabbat. Um, would Brown work? With, I mean, I guess I, you know what? Why don't I put pull you Yarvi up here just so we know that he's going to get points with Kachuk, Granlin, Shabbat, and Dadnov. That's going to get him points for sure. Uh, and then Tierney, White, Brown, Fowler, Brandstrom. So we, it's not, we don't have a ton of talent, period. Uh, but it is scattered here and there. Um, Brian Boyle up there. So who's dragging this down? Nobody's dragging it down, but we have a, I mean, it's fine. The zero is fine with me. Uh, and the rest of it is fine as well. But Batherson over one of these guys. No, it doesn't make a difference. So that's fine. The penalty kill is fine. It's not going to probably cost us too much. Obviously in goal, we still got our guys four on four is Granlin Dadnov, white Kachuk, and then continued not Tierney and Brown, but Tierney and pull you That's definitely what I want. I want to get him ice time. And then three on three, we've got Granlin, Dadnov, Kachuk, White, Tierney, and not Brown, but right winger, pull you Yarvi. There we go. Changing lines. There we go. All set. Starting lineup. Pull you Yarvi. There we go. We'll put Nick Paul over on the other side because he's a left handed player. Uh, Colin White can play center right wing. Pull you Yarvi's right wing. So probably would rather have a bona fide. Uh, left winger there. We'll put Brian Boyle up there. Shelter Paul. Brian Boyle is just a little bit better. Uh, so we'll officially do that. And then, so that is fine. Austin Watson with Norris and Batherson. Things are looking okay. We'll see how the sim goes. We can actually get some gameplay in this episode too. Um, we still have to sign uh, Brett Ritchie and see where he lands. And I'll make some roster changes there. Let's see if they do uh, end up signing. Jack Roslevic except as presented, but it was not a done deal just yet. So if Roslovic comes, all of a sudden, that's uh, that's great for us. And Brett, Brett Ritchie has joined the team. Let's see how are these new lines do against Boston. A one nothing shutout win. That's actually pretty awesome. Decided they were not willing to match $1 million for Jack Roslovic, giving the minimum salary. We don't have to give away any draft picks. That's big, boys. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set the lines again. I talked through, you guys understand my thought process. Let's go ahead and just get it done now. All right, guys, so the lines look just a little bit different. I've made the decision to move Granlin down uh, between Boyle and Pull You Yarvi. Uh, I'm actually going to check something real quick. If Connor Brown, yeah, no, if Connor Brown goes there, that doesn't work. Uh, if Connor Brown switches with Boyle, no, because we, we need the power for it. If Brett Ritchie goes up there, it still doesn't work. So, the reason I've got Granlin down here is because he's going to help out pull you Yarvi. Well, both Kachuk and Dadnov are going to help out Colin White. Uh, Brian Boyle is there for chemistry, getting us the power forward. Uh, then we've got Tierney as the two-way forward with the power forward and the two-way forward, getting us another plus three. And then we've got Watson with the two-way forward, Roslovic and, and Norris. So Norris is going to stay in the NHL. He's one of the only ones I decided to keep in the NHL. Take a quick look at best lines down here. Uh, Batherson is a two-way forward, so we'll move him down because Baptiste is really good on that first line. Archibald's a grinder. Uh, let's switch these guys around. So there we go. So Formanton is going to be the left-wing sniper with the center playmaker in Chalopic. The right wing is Nick Baptiste. Uh, then we've got Balsers, the sniper, with Shaw, the two-way forward. Does Logan Logan Brown uh, doesn't exactly help it too much, but I'm going to try it. Then we got two-way forward sniper, sniper. That's not definitely not good. Uh, Matthew Pekka is a playmaker. Uh, Matthew Pekka, can you... He's 27, but would he be better than any of these guys on this line? No. Uh, and then finally, we got Bodine with a Abramov and Archibald. So it doesn't look like... Ar oh, uh, it's Vitaly Abramov uh, down there. There we go. So, yeah, there we go. We're moving Marion Gabrick to the bottom line. Only a minus one down there. It's not the end of the world. But we got two-way forward sniper playmaker there. We've got power forward sniper two-way forward here. And then the first line, the important guys, guys like Formanton and Chalopic, uh, are getting the plus three thanks to a guy like Nick Baptiste. Defensively, there's only so much I can do. Um, La uh, if we, we can get a plus three up there, neither of these guys are really good uh, here. If we, you know, uh, I can get a minus two, which is... Is it worth it? Are these guys going to grow up here? Yeah, uh, he, he could. He's medium top six. He might, but I, I don't think he will. Jaros, uh, I could get that to evens, even Stevens on both of them. I think I'll do the even Stevens. Uh, and then Ingle, like I said, Hogberg, and not Decord, but Gustafson there. Scratch him. 
Philip Gustafson is now going to be backing up Marcus Hogberg. So the AHL looks fine in the NHL. We're going more for that plus three. We're hoping to grow these guys. A guy like Kachuk and Dadnov are going to put up points together, and Colin White's going to be the beneficiary of it. Uh, Granlund is helping Puglia Yarvi and Boyle get the plus three, so it's really 82, 86, 81, which isn't horrible. Then we've got Brett Ritchie boosting both Brown and Tierney, another guy, uh, Tierney here, who only has got so much time left to grow. I mean, I guess I could shield Colin White and just put Tierney up there because Colin White is a two-way forward. Um, but I kind of want him to get points. So I'm going to keep him on that first line. And then we got Jack Roslevic down here who's good for the penalty kill. I could maybe swap out Austin Watson. He's fine, but he's a grinder. Um, but we do need a little physicality down there. We've got Austin Watson and Brett Ritchie uh, down there. Connor Brown, you know, six foot 185, meh. Chris Tierney, 6'1", 195, so we got some size down here. Uh, but Brett Ritchie and Watson, we got pretty much strength on every line with Boyle, Ritchie, Kachuk, and Watson. So those are the lines I'm going to simulate up probably to, oh, let's see where I'm going to get to here. Um, what are we going to do? Uh, probably get up to this game against the Montreal Canadiens uh, after the back-to-back -back here in early December. We play them three times in this month. So that would be kind of fun. Let's go ahead and do that up against Montreal on December 6th. So I will see you guys when we get there. All right, boys, I am back. And whoo, baby, look who's atop the Atlantic division. It is your Ottawa Senators at 38 points in 28 games played, 18, 8, and 2. We are absolutely killing it. Evgeny Dadnov is point per game. Uh, and I can only assume that means good things for Colin White and Kachuk. Um, if you guys can see, the Canadians game turns out to be a really, really important one. They are only three points behind us in the standings. Winning this one after winning them uh, in Montreal, it would be big. It would help us in the standings quite a bit. We'd hit that 40 points in 29 games. That'd be fantastic, even if we get a point taking three of four off of them. But let's quickly take a look at our points, catch you up on what happened. Uh, Dadanov with 28, nine goals. We got Colin White with 24 and 28 uh, he's got seven goals. We got 19 points for and seven goals for Brady Kachuk. So these guys are doing well. Uh, that's exactly what I want to see out of my young first line. Connor Brown's doing fine. Uh, Mikhail Granlin on the second line doing okay. Gra uh, Jack Roslovic, look at that. Eight goals chipping in on the fourth line. He's only getting 13 minutes. I'll take that. Josh Norris on that fourth line. So that fourth line, please play in 10 minutes. There's no way he keeps up this pace. Uh, Pulu Yarby's got seven goals, 12 points. So He's doing okay. He's up to a 79. I believe he was a 78 when we acquired him. He's playing 16 minutes. How many of his points are on the power play? He's got two power play points, so 10 even strength points, which is nice. Uh, let's stick to just forwards for now. Uh, but it's good to see uh, Tierney there. Uh, Brian Boyle's a plus three, so what you want to see is those pluses. I think he's he's always up to an 80 now, too. Uh, he must be loving, he, loving life here in Ottawa. How could you not? Uh, getting paid to play hockey one last time. I think he's playing on the third line, I think. I think so. I'm not entirely sure. Brett Ritchie, four points, or uh, plus four, nine points. Austin Watson with eight points. And uh, Nick Paul played the first game of the season, and we kind of sent him down. If we take a look at our defensemen, we've got Cam Fowler with 12, but he's a minus five. So Fowler and Shabbat don't seem to work great together. But uh, Brandstrom there on that middle pairing, uh, six goals, 11 points. Cam Fowler's got seven goals. Jesus. Nikita Zaitsev with 11 points, all assists. Uh, plus 12 there. Chris Russell, the cap dump from the Oilers, is turning out to be a good pickup as well. Nine points plus five. Mike Riley's doing well. Nine points plus 14. Uh, and then Thomas Shabbat with only nine points. is a little bit disappointing. So maybe I need to look and try and focus on Thomas Shabbat uh, a bit more. Try and get somebody up there that works well with him. At least split those top two guys up. But you guys can see Brian Boyle, Pugliarvi, and Granlund is a very solid second line right now. A couple minuses, but some pluses, and that should even out by the end of the season. Then we got Connor Brown, Chris Tierney, and Brett Ritchie. And then Roslovic, Norris, and, uh, and and Watson are working really well. So the whole team is clicking right now, except for this first defensive pairing. Uh, I could move Brandstrom up there. I don't know if that's a good or a bad idea. He's currently, I mean, 11 points plus four. I think he deserves the extra ice time. I could move Chris Russell up there because it really doesn't matter to me if Chris Russell does well or not. Um, so I think I will. I'll move Chris Russell up there with Thomas Shabbat. Uh, Brandstrom still gets to play those more sheltered minutes um, with Cam Fowler. He gets to play on the second, that second defensive pairing, that middle pairing. And then 
gets to play on that first line power play. How many of his points are power play points, I wonder? Uh, two. Only two, and he's got two game-winning goals. I mean, he's pretty clutch. Mike Riley and Nikita Zaitsev down there. Zaitsev playing fine. He's a plus 12, so this this third pairing is just a bona fide shutdown pairing. If I need to shut somebody down, then that's where they go. Uh, so you can see Brandstrom is playing there. I, a brand, a Shabbat is playing on that first power play. Um, I don't want to totally just overload Brandstrom. I think it might be a little early. I know it gives us plus three, but uh, I'm cool with the way things are going. Um, White, uh, Pulu Yarvi, and Kachuk uh, are, all, are all playing on the special teams. The penalty kill seems to be doing well, but let's go ahead and confirm that. Oh, I didn't even look at goalies. Hold on, we got to take a look at our goalies. I guess we should be able to tell from our team stats, but we'll see how Matt Murray uh, is doing and see if that was a good pickup or not. Matt Murray is 13-5-2 and two with 9-10 and 285. You know what? I, that's solid enough. I'll take that. Anders Nielsen, well, maybe if we're still in contention, we'll go to look upgrade our, our backup goaltender at the deadline, maybe. Uh, I don't know, but the deadline, I can't wait to get to it. Um, but let's go ahead and check out our team stats. Right now, I think we're, we've are we got a lot of higher shooting percentages, although they seem sustainable. Uh, but top of the Atlantic, 3.25 goals for per game puts us third in the division, and only 2.96 against, well, that actually is the second most in the division. So right now, we're a very offensive team. I mean, we could definitely try and trim that up but it's certainly nothing too alarming the tampa bay lightning are a better team than us for sure you can see you know putting up half a goal more per game at least uh our power play is at tw oh our power play is absolutely uh oh i thought our power play was at 24 percent. oh my god no uh it's at 18 percent, which isn't bad only uh only had 89 power plays third most so penalty killing percentage at 79 percent. Nah, that's the worst in the division it's not great, so right now it seems like we're winning based on the back of our offense, which is f is fine. But I think putting Chris Russell on the top uh, top defensive pairing with um, with Shabbat should work for us. But guys, let's go ahead and jump into this game against Montreal. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, on home ice. We've got the Colin White, Kachuk, and Dadnov line up against Dano, Gallagher, uh, and Druin. And let's see if we can beat them back to back nights as they flip it out. But then we got Chris Russell and Thomas Shabbat, and yeah, there was an update, but it doesn't seem to have the latest Ottawa Senators jerseys, so we will, will eagerly await for them uh, to put those in the game, uh, because I'm, I am I really want the 2D send back, boys. I really, really want the 2D send, because that jersey is nice. Let's go ahead and move this thing out up to Kachuk. Oh, that was not a good pass. And Chris Russell from the point, I take a random slap shot just to just to throw it on because we were getting some changes in. But Chris Russell is going to find the gap past Carey Price. And that's his first goal for us. The trade acquisition, the cap dump, I say again, that little bit of sweetener that we took. I know it kind of must have hurt. Uh, well, must might not have hurt. I, I did justify the trade saying that they... Uh, we're a fractured relationship anyway. Pulu Yarby didn't really want to play for the Oilers. So we also get a cap dump in there. Give him a player and a pick. And man, it seems to really have worked out for us. I don't know what Anisimov is doing in Edmonton. Uh, but right now, Chris Russell is doing work for us here in Edmonton. Or uh, here in, uh, sorry, Ottawa. We get a little cycle going here in the zone, ladies and gentlemen. Nikita Zaitsev now to Tierney. Look at this. We're putting some serious pressure on. Look at this. Brown into the middle of the Tierney. Tierney's going to go back to Zaitsev. Zaitsev down low to Richie. Richie even lower to Brown. Brown is going to get back up to Richie. We get Riley. Riley's got a little spot, but unable to hit it. And they, that shot is going to go into the corner. And a huge hit on Josh Anderson. The recent signing for the Montreal Canadiens. Man, I, if I had injuries on, that one might have been one that you're talking about. And then we give the puck away. And Joel Armia is going to come streaking off the bench, make a move, go backhand. Uh, and that's a bold move from that fan. Dangerous thing to do, my guy. Um, but taking a look here, they find Armia. Who was that? Number 37. Uh, Norris, uh, the young kid, just not, not, not seeing him coming off the bench. Zaitsev. Can't get there, goes a little too far forward, and they're going to just get the equalizer on the backhand. As I'm talking about a huge hit, well, Kakaniemi does his thing, steals the puck back a good two-way forward, and is going to get a goal. And there he is again, Joel Armia. He's eating our lunches, boys. 
Woo, thank God we picked that one up because that was an easy backdoor tap in. That's not where I wanted to pass it, but thank you. I think it was uh, Shabbat, by the way, that picked that puck up. We get Brandstrom deep in the zone now, but he gets knocked off the puck by Tyler Toffoli. Another good signing from, you know what? These Canadian teams are making good signings, man. I'll tell you what, but Suzuki gets in. We try to poke it, can't get there. Can Brandstrom beat him to the puck? No, he can't. Tatar, Toffoli just before the period ends. Come on, just time up in the corner. Just hold it, just hold it. There's only a few seconds left, and there we go. 1-1, one, one. but man, I'll tell you what. We had one good chance, the slap shot, but yeah, the stats don't don't lie. We, we were on the attack, but we just couldn't get shots away. That's one thing. We, we're not going to beat uh, Carey, Carey Price on um, with three shots in a period. Come on. We got to put some more pucks on that, boys. Chris Russell gets into the zone early, and I wanted to feed it out to the middle. He has, he's got some wheels, though. I'll give him that. Chris Russell is not, you know, he's not your typical cap dump. He's totally usable, uh, but, uh, you know, obviously in game, they don't prefer to have a 79 overall making... Oh, Colin White shakes him. Dadunov's on the back door, but we can't hit him. Oh, he shakes Shea Weber, but we can't hit Dadunov on the back door. We step up on Drew in, and Chris Russell with a decent hit. Dadunov gets tied up at center, but we do get it into the zone. Can we feed it in, in the middle? No, we can't, but we stay with it. Shabbat pinching. It's a good pinch. He keeps it in. Chris Russell, can he do it again? Yeah, no, nah, it's not. that one's not going in. Ooh, but somehow we chip that puck back up and out to Kachuk, who gets held. Come on, that's a little bit of a hold. That was pretty far away from the boards there, EA. Ryan Boyle, with his physicality, powers to the front, finds Grandly, but Carey Price, good slide over the... Oh, come I don't even have the puck. What the heck? All these holds. Ref, where are the whistles? Where's the holding penalties? Julio Yarby now gets into the zone. He's got Tierney across. We find him this time, boys. And let's go, Sens fans. We are back up 2-1. Pull you, Yarby. Uh, are they on the wrong side of the glass? What's going on there, EA? Come on. Pull you. He's huge. I, for I always forget that Pull you, Yarby is six foot four, But he's absolutely massive. He can skate. He's got the skill. He just needs a place where he feels comfortable and happy. And it's looking like that's Ottawa for him, boys, as he hits Tierney on the back door. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Go entertaining these Ottawa fans. We've, we're top of the division, something that Ottawa hasn't been able to say for quite some time now, uh, and hopefully we can keep it rolling. I mean, I know we're only through about 30 games, but heck, I'll take it at any point, especially when you're over a quarter of the season through. And now they decide to blow a whistle. It's for interference on Richie for a little nudge down in the corner to Foley now. They're going to get it to Deneau. Oh, my God. Oh, it's right out in front, Murray, with a good save. Can we get this thing all the way down the ice? Oh, my God. Colin White stops it. He wants to go on the attack, I guess. No, thanks. I'd like to get that puck as deep as possible. Uh, let's get that to Shabbat and then up and out of the zone. All the way deep. But, wow, to Foley sitting all the way back there. I guess he was ready for it. Colin White wanted to be on the attack. He is. He takes the shot. We're going to find Shabbat at the point. Zaitsev, we get that down to White. We'll just put it on low. No, we missed the net. We find Roslovic. Yes, we can. We try to find White cutting. I saw that nice little cut. Man, look at this cycle. We're on the penalty kill, boys, but I don't care. We're cycling on the short-handed four against five, and we're finding a guy. Joel Armia, though, the guy that was super dominant in the first period. Let's get this thing all the way down the ice. Oh, is Colin White going to beat him? No, nah, he's not going to beat him. We got, we're, I've got to get off the ice. There we go. And now we got Norris and the young penalty killing line. Joel Armia. Ooh, a good hit. But Philippe Deneau picks the puck up. He's in. We trip him, and that might be a penalty shot. I don't know if they clear call it a clear cut breakaway or not. No, it is a five on three, and that's a bad trip. Who took the penalty? Uh, number six. I yeah, that's Chris Russell. Uh, I was coming back here trying to avoid a clear-cut opportunity, and it's a five-on-three, so now there's definitely not going to be a cycle in the offensive zone. And just with three seconds left, Norris again just did not have a good game so far, and it goes from bad to worse as he goes from all the way behind his net. And guys, that went over the Montreal Canadiens bench. He shot it from behind the net here over the bench. I thought I was safe just dumping it. Uh, but it turns out that uh, dude's got a cannon or the, maybe the puck flipped up on him. But now we got to kill uh, the rest of this second penalty as we had almost done a fantastic job getting away with the five on three. Okay, Riley. 
Leave it for Dadanov. I like it. We got him on the back door. Boil! Oh, I was wheeling away in celebration, but Carey Price flashes the leather. What? Boyle can't bury that. Doesn't slam it home in the empty cage, practically, but Carey Price's glove is there. Wow, I can't believe we just missed on that opportunity to get the insurance marker short-handed. And Suzuki's going to bury a rebound. Murray was flying back and forth. And yes, we did take a tripping penalty. That wasn't good at all. The puck landed right on his stick. And the empty cage was begging for him to put it in. And that Brian Boyle miss, boys, kills us. And now that's only one guy out. So here you go. I wasn't commentating. I was focused. Bounces right off Russell. Goes straight to Suzuki's stick. Matt Murray's out of position here. Look at that. Bounces right off him, and Murray can't do anything about it. We still have a long power 141 to go here. An undisciplined second period has cost us here, guys. Armia now with the puck again. He finds the no, and Murray makes a good save. They do leave this side of the ice open. We only have 15 seconds to go here. We're just going to saucer past that one all the way down the ice here. Let's see if we can get a line change. There we go. Keep Roslovic from pinching too far. Step up on him. Pass it back to Brandstrom. There we got three, two, one, and we're back to even strength here, guys. Let's go. Brandstrom loses his man. He's got some speed. Oh, are we going to see a coast to coast from Eric Brandstrom? No, we're not. Oh, that was almost there. He's got to hustle back now. Anderson tries to toe drag, finds the no. Brandstrom picks it up. But Anderson now with the puck again. He's going to go back to the point to Toffoli. Toffoli gets it knocked off, but it finds Deno. Anderson out in front, Dadanov down low, Murray with a good save. Let's just see if we can just hold this puck for the rest of the period. Dadanov is flying. Yeah, we weren't going to get it there. 2-2, two, two, and Jesus, boys, the penalty minutes. Eight penalty minutes, and most of them were that period there. One for four on their power play, Montreal. So not bad, pretty decent. The reason this game is tied, and hopefully we, if we have a disciplined third period, we'll be able to get one more because we've had the chances. We just got to bury them. We get Dadnov in the high slot. Oh, and he's knocked down by Petrie after he scores. But Dadanov from the high slot is going to score. Carey Price backed up, used the defender as a shield. That's his 10th of the season and assures that he's basically a point per game still. Colin White there. Look at that. Feeds it to the slot. He stops. Gets drilled. He gets it absolutely drilled in the high slot. Look at this. Step there. Boom. Gets the quick shot away. The quick release. Petrie. Doesn't like it, but it's already in the back of the net. Can't get too mad over that hit because, uh, you know, he's obviously going to hit you if you're going to try and release it. But uh, it was already in the back of the net by the time uh, we hit the ice. So that was pretty good. Brian Boyle using his strength now right off the faceoff. Jesse Puglio Yarby. Again, I wanted to hit Puglio Yarby and not not uh, Granlin on the back door. But Brian Boyle, nice. He may be slow, but he's definitely a presence. Let's get Puglio Yarby out there. The little uh, one-touch deke we get. Oh! We get into the slot, take the shot, unable to do anything, and uh-oh, this is where Brian Boyle is not an asset. On the back check, Shabbat almost gets shook, not really, but sort of. We get the little nut, we get enough of a nudge in, and now we got Puliyarvi on the break. Puliyarvi with speed, Puliyarvi toe drag. Oh, we couldn't get it past Carey Price. Branstrom finds Brett Ritchie, he doesn't have a ton of speed. Takes the slap shot, it's gonna squeak through! Brett Ritchie on the assist from Eric Brandstrom is gonna score! They were on a line change, Brandstrom's quick thinking sees it, finds Brett Ritchie hanging at the blue line, we feed it up to him here. He gets into the zone all alone, he's not got hand skill or speed, but just forces it through Carey Price, and you gotta think Price has gotta do a little bit better than that one, guys. He's gotta do a little bit better, he's got defenseman trailing, Takes the quick slapper. It goes under the arm. And there he goes with the ice sweep. Brett Ritchie on the third line with Connor Brown and Chris Tierney. But, guys, that was Brandstrom picking it up behind the net and finding Ritchie on a solid, solid breakout pass. We're starting to get a cycle going here, guys. Uh, and Brandstrom picks that puck up on a poor pass there from Cam Fowler. Let's keep it deep. Keep it in. Come on. Let go of me, please. I don't have the puck. We keep it in. Brandstrom does, uh, but we got to retreat a little bit. Forecheck was good. Uh, cycle got going. Fourth line doing its job, keeping the puck 200 feet from our uh, 
Arnett. Can we get that with White? There we go. We got our first line coming out here soon. Uh, I guess not because we got both Roslovic and Watson on the break. Roslovic gets inside. Watson tries to fire that thing home, but it gets knocked off his stick. We got Mike Riley there, and we're going to dump that thing down for an icing. Ooh, that was almost uh, not too bad. The little slip deke by Dadnoff gets him around. Brandstrom and another save from Carey Price. I just can't seem to get it past him on the one-timers. I got to be in closer, apparently, but the nice little slip deke there. Uh, the chip deke, I should say, from Dadnoff. And yes, it is four on four because I shot after the whistle just because, you know, why not? Uh, and they challenged me to a fight. No, I didn't accept it. Oh, my God. That thing almost went in from Brady Kachuk. Got 4.46 left to go. You know what time it is, boys. It's time to stick around for the entire thing. You guys are ready for it. I know I am. We are up pretty nicely. Kachuk, though. We find Russell. Back to Kachuk. Nice little one-two. Kachuk in. Backhand. Forehand. Oh, and it's just going wide. Xavier Olette picks that up in front of the, the stick lift attempt by Brady Kachuk. Nice by Chris Russell. Nice Brady Kachuk on the slower back check, though. I don't think I don't see that. Don't think I don't see that, Brady. Uh, what is going on with the passing right now? It's not going anywhere close to where I want it to. And they're going to try and find him out in front, but nah, we've got our guys there. Kachuk, do you want to skate or nah, my guy? Because, like, we're trying, we're trying here. Are you tired? Is that what it is? Well, let's get the first line out there then. We'll go like this. Hold the puck a little bit. Nice Shabbat. To Grandland, little sidestep. Let's go. Oh, we're off sides, and Dadanov is off sides. I actually like Kachuk, and uh, who was that? White, Colin White, as my second uh, second four on four. That's pretty nice. But they are definitely going the uh, aggressive strategy here. Shea Weber trying to break it in, dumps it deep because you know he's not going to dangle anybody. Uh, let's go ahead, go wide there to Grandland. Little chip deke around Petrie. We got it to work. We stop and pop. Oh, and Carey Price with another glove save. I guess I got to shoot blocker side on Carey Price or maybe get that screen in there. 326 left in this third period here, ladies and gentlemen. And Jack Roslovic has not won a ton of faceoffs for us. I want to know what his faceoff rating is because either I'm just losing faceoffs, which, you know, is totally possible. But as far as luck is concerned, you'd think I'd win a little bit more. So maybe he's got a low faceoff rating. Uh, they find Petrie back at the point to Drew in. Cam Fowler with a good block. We're going to go off the boards, but not out. They find Suzuki in tight. He's already got one. That's not going to be two. Let's find Shabbat now. Shabbat, let's go. Shabbat with speed. Up the wing. We're going to stop and curl a little bit. We find Tierney coming in. He takes the low shot. Unable to get anybody there for the rebound. The step on Drew in is going to force that puck to go free. Chris Tierney got a lot of ice in front of him. Can he turn on the Jets? Around Petrie. He's around and we take the shot. Oh, he tried to go so top corner. And they're going to pull their goalie so soon. When they just got... Where is everybody? Suzuki. And that's going to be a trip on Zaitsev. As I'm going to block it, Suzuki just decides to skate over him. And that's going to be a tripping penalty. A very undisciplined game. Look at this, this, ah, I tried to block the pass back. It's a six on four now, but the nice thing is we can shoot for the net. Let's see if we can actually hit one here. Jack Roslovic does win one there. We get it up to Colin White and, oh, are they going to back? Oh, they're going to back off and let me score. Look at that. Let's rub salt in the wounds into the net. Boom. Colin White scores. Oh, no, he gets his head stuck in the net too, but scores the empty netter and scores with himself to the slide. Makes it 5-2, and that's a nice point there for Colin White, assisted by Shabbat. Just backs off me. Like, come on, EA. You got to you gotta have him step a little harder, right? It, it, you're down by two. You got an empty net. You got to, you know, you got to try and stop me from at least hitting the blue line. Because now it's all over. 5-2 with 30 seconds to go. We can just keep dumping it. Make him go the length of the ice. They're not going to pull the goalie. Peter's not pulling him down by three. There we go. A good block off there. And we're going to get the little chip up off the boards. Norris gets in a little deep. No dead man's chase, really. Um, gets in just deep enough where it's not a problem. Cam Fowler with another nice step. We're going to go around to Tierney. Go to Chris Russell. Let him flip it all the way out with his goal in his live comm debut, might I add. Three, 
two, one, and there we go. That's going to be a 5-2 victory and keeps us atop of the Atlantic, boys. What a game. That was pretty fun. You know, shots were definitely in their favor. Not Carey Price's greatest night, but Shabbat had three apples, a goal and an assist for White, a goal and an assist for Dadanov. So there's our star players getting some points, guys. Looks good. Let's keep it rolling, hopefully. But that's all the time I have for this one. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you want to see some more, and I will see you guys in the next one.